Good day and thanks to our hosts and attendees. Um, my name is Chris Royals. I'm field CTO at Cloudera. I have an academic background and practice software engineering of complex systems in telecommunications for a number of years. As field CTO, I work with urgency. I seek patterns and consistency and look to make things long lived. If you have questions or feedback, please do connect on LinkedIn. Let's carry on the conversation. I've been with Cloudera for over six years, and one of the key objectives that I've had is accessibility, accessibility of our software, our documentation, and our website. It's an example of a long-lived program. Cloudera's vision is we envisage a world where everyone can quickly and easily access the data, powered information, and insights they need in just a few clicks. And I hope to be able to demonstrate to you today what that means. Our mission is to make data and analytics easy and accessible to everyone. And here's an example. So this is our visual applications. Visual applications are embedded into two of our data services, our Cloudera Data Warehouse and Cloudera Machine Learning. What you're seeing on the screen here is the ability to type what you need and it will automatically discover from the data lake and the data warehouse the most appropriate data to present based on your question. Once you've described the data that you're looking for, you can then select for a recommendation of the best visualization. So both are using artificial intelligence as part of how the application functions to do natural language processing and map that to data stores and sources, as well as deciding the best visualization for that aggregation of data. We've embedded it into our Cloudera Data Warehouse to really make it accessible again to everybody, to be able to tell stories on top of your data very, very quickly. We've embedded it into machine learning for two reasons. One, to help the data scientists tell their story in terms of the types of applications and machine learning models they're building, but also as a framework to help you monitor your models in production, in operation. Because once you find a use case and deliver it to production, you then need to maintain it in that operational state as a long-lived project. To help with this, our team at Fast Forward Labs, they do a lot of work up front. They go and speak to academic institutions and they speak to our industrial partners and identify new ways of working new best practice in machine learning. They write this up in a set of reports, and here's an example of one for structural time series, which is linked to the use case I'm going to present next. It's broken into a number of sections. The first is an executive summary to explain the value uh, of this approach to the business. So it's, it's presented in business language. The second then is the technical review of which frameworks and approaches to implement and why. We then talk about the ethics of implementing this approach and the types of considerations you not, might need to make in terms of where and how it can be applied in real world use cases. And finally, we'll tell a story uh, three to five years into the future to help set that visionary piece and help you understand how it might be utilized, not just today, but also going forward. So please do go and review Fast Forward Labs and our online reports. There's over eight of them available today, free for download and for review, and we'll be releasing more as time passes. In relation to that, that time series analysis is used in kind of medical use cases. And we've worked with Cerner on building out a capability to help reduce blood poisoning or the release of um, patients from hospital where they carry a higher risk of suffering blood poisoning when they return home. I wanna quote Ryan Brush, he's senior director and distinguished engineer at Cerner. Our clients are reporting that the new system has actually saved hundreds of lives by being able to predict if a patient is septic more effect effectively than they could before. Obviously, there's a doctor and nurse in the loop here, and this is designed to inform the decisions that they make and help give them the information they need around the risk of the patient profile so that they can make the decision, the informed decision as to whether that patient should be released back to home. Consider there from just as a moment, the ethics and bias that may have to be taken into account, the amount of observability and auditing that has to go on behind the scenes in order to take this model 
and the formal operations around it and help build trust that it's doing the right thing for the right reasons. Uh, you can explore that story more online and the link is published on the slide. So when we think in terms of helping organizations with machine learning and AI, we have four pillars uh, when we think of our platform and how information and data could be utilized. We look at opportunities to uh, reduce cost, and that's predominantly around infrastructure optimization. This is about how we can help do more with less, if you like, less, less infrastructure, and how we might be able to separate compute and storage. So you can optimize your storage models, for example. The second is cost avoidance. This is around the operational aspects of the platform, making it far easier to identify the data you need, manage it, bring it under governance, and then serve it to your customers and or to areas of your organization, lines of business, let's suggest. I'll go to the fourth now, which is the risk reduction. This is, able, this is about delivering against SLAs, really reducing risk on your business and making sure that we're able to deliver higher SLAs based on resource isolation and workload management. The one with the big number against it, this is about unlocking value quicker. And I've used the word self-service a few times. With the platform, we can now deliver capabilities directly to the lines of business so they can self-service the data that they need. They can manage the ownership of that data, but also the analytical applications they need to apply to that data in order to help drive value. Lines of business are typically closer to the problem, understanding the business domain for that problem, and normally multifunctional teams that can help solve it more directly. And so what we need to make sure we can do is manage the enterprise centrally, but delegate to the lines of business the types of workloads they might need in order to deliver the value that they're looking for. So these four pillars are all about unlocking value faster letting the line of business self-provision and self-serve and helping you scale your organization so you can work in a more distributed fashion. When we get to value faster, this is the type of impact it might have. JP Morgan and Chase and machine learning, and uh, they applied machine learning to passing financial deals. This was once done by legal teams and took thousands of hours. They created a new application called COIN for contract intelligence. It does a very monotonous job, if you like, of interpreting commercial loan agreements. The project went live, and what it's done is, if you like, replaced over 360,000 hours of lawyer time annually. The software reviews the documents in seconds and is less error prone. What's effectively doing is it's using contracts that have already been redlined as training sets and un understanding how to apply those to the new contracts that it sees and new agreements that it sees. What I like about this example is Mariana Lake, the lender's finance chief, um, she quoted the following, we're willing to invest to stay ahead of the curve, even if the final analysis, some of that money will go to product or a service that wasn't needed. What that means is she's prepared to take a risk, prepared to try and experiment. And if, she, if that fails, that's okay. At least we've learned something from it. And then she continues, that's because we can't wait to know what the outcome, the end game really looks like because the environment is moving so fast. There's a realization this domain is moving so quickly that in order to stay competitive, in order to stay ahead of the curve, they have to keep on innovating. And machine learning and AI is seen as a core feature of achieving that. So what is this CDP I keep going on, on about, the Cloudera data platform? Well, it's the enterprise data cloud. It comes in a number of different form factors. What you're looking at here is our public cloud form factor. The public cloud form factor is available on Amazon, Azure, and Google. We also have a private cloud form factor, which can be deployed into your data center and has a number of cloud qualities I'll come on to in a moment. But this is the enterprise data cloud. Think of it as an integrated set of instances within your organization. It has a single and global control plane that delivers central enterprise governance. Multiple self-service analytical applications, such as data engineering and machine learning, that can be delivered directly into your lines of business globally to provide scale. From a platform level capability, it has a single catalog which automatically classifies and labels your data, identifying sensitivities in the data, such as 
uh, identifiable personal information and labeling that appropriately so you can apply policies on that globally. So your lines of business don't have to worry about the security policies of the business, they just have to worry about doing the tasks that they need to deliver. The replication manager automatically enables replication between different instances of both data and metadata. And so that gives you backup disaster recovery. It also enables you to move data local to the users and to their workloads. On workloads, Workload Manager helps you take a data-driven approach to where it's most efficient to run a workload of a particular type. Machine learning may be better off done in the cloud when training, but may need to be brought back on premise when running in an operational state. Very, uh, very uh, usual to see that in industrial manufacturing, where the machine learning has to be embedded into the, into the manufacturing process itself. So Workload Manager lets you understand the workloads intimately, gaining that observability and telemetry, and really working out where it's best to deploy that workload. And I mentioned earlier about cloud qualities. We are moving and helping organizations move from monolithic data hub kind of pattern in cloud area uh, in CDH and HDP to a modern platform. This platform has a number of qualities. It's elastic. What I mean is it only utilizes the resource when it's running a particular workload. It's utility-based in terms of how it's consumed and how it's priced. You can isolate workloads. So you can have a team dedicated to the financial organization, for example, and another team allocated to general, um, general analytics within the business. These teams can be allocated different resource pools. And those resource pools can be isolated from each other and independently entirely elastic. We reduce the operational cost through this single control plane and orchestration and self-service down to the lines of business. We can separate applications, processing and storage. So when we bring this on-premise into your private cloud, we have a separation of runtime, cores and memory from storage in terms of where your data is laid out on your storage services. That separation enables you to scale independently. And CDP is a multi-layered architecture now where you can separate that compute from storage and deliver it the way you want to uh, based on your workloads. This is what it looks like at Cloudera. So this is our single control plane, it's global. This is the Cloudera account and showing the instances across that account. You can see they're geographically distributed. We are a global business and we have different um, instances in each geography. So the single control plane allows us to manage all of those instances at once. We have federated security and governance and a total organizational view. We've got control planes in each region. There's a control plane in America, in EMEA, and in Asia Pacific. We can manage each instance and delegate those instances down to the lines of business. And that enables you to bring multidisciplinary teams together and help them close to their business problem solve it with the, with the data that they have within the teams that they, they have. Through resource isolation, we can also deliver against SLA boundaries and meet the demands of the business in a more flexible way. What you'll notice here as well is you could align this with qualities of the data mesh paradigm. The data mesh is a pattern that has been kind of talked about by an organization called ThoughtWorks. And they talk about there being a central governance structure, which we have, the lines of business to be able to self-provision, the analytical applications that they need, which we can do, and the ability to think of data as a product in terms of work with it where it's sourced, we can, based on regional and local instances being deployed. And then you can take that data through the pipelines, thinking of it as a product to go from where it's created to where it might be consumed by your data customers. We talked about operational efficiency. This is how easy it is to provision a cloud error machine learning workspace. You give it a name and you click provision. There isn't advanced options if you want to. So you might need to train your models using GPUs. You can select the advanced option and select the range of GPU resources you might want to allocate to your workspace. When you create a workspace, you're combining two things, a virtual set of resources, the resources I want to allocate, as in I need 30 machines, 
when they're required with a team. So here are my administration members of the team and here are my users of the team and they can all collaborate within that one workspace. We don't need to bring IT into the loop. This can be provisioned directly by the line of business and it simplifies and streamlines working processes. Once deployed within CML, we've embedded what we term declarative projects as a canvas uh, of applied machine learning prototypes. This is taking that fast forward labs research and building it as pre-built projects. And these projects are declarative in that they can build themselves. So we go to version control, we download the code assets, we run a number of jobs to import data, we train a number of models, we deploy those models as endpoints and deploy the applications on the top. They're designed to help you explain the value of an approach and demonstrate it in concrete terms with the peers and business and be able to refer back, if you like, to those fast forward labs reports to show you following best practice and to show you what that ambition might be around that particular new project that you might have in mind. And this is what it looks like in version control. This is about reducing cost, making things reusable, helping scale. Um, these projects are declarative. You just need a single file in here, this project metadata YAML to rematerialize the project in its own right. So this is about automation and be able to reproduce the same results in a consistent manner. And again, that brings trust back to the machine learning and that the machine learning models can, are built on the right data in the right way, using the right methodologies. Talking about the right data, as part of Cloud Era Machine Learning, we've embedded the ability to automatically discover what data assets you own and have access to. And so with a single click, you can open up this view and it enables you through best practice to import either the API or code snippets into your project that are based on efficient ways of authenticating with the rest of the system, authenticating with those data stores, and then integrating the, the data frames, if you like, with your projects, so you can analyze that data directly. We've also embedded MLflow. MLflow is an open source project and designed to deliver a number of uh, capabilities. The first is the ability to train models in a consistent way and at scale. It helps to package those models up with, it helps to manage the observability and telemetry of the model training process. And once deployed, it helps you monitor that model in production. The packaging helps portability and consistency of that model as it moves through its life cycle. And we've also embedded a number of visualizations for really exploring the performance of the models, both as individual models and also as collections of models at scale. So you can generate hundreds of models of which you might have thousands of variations and MLflow will help you manage that at scale. Just taking a step back from machine learning, if we look at data engineering for a moment, data engineering has been designed to run Spark and Python workloads at scale. You can also run Hive workloads as well. It has a seamless integration with Airflow for scheduling the actual processes, the workloads you want to run. And it runs a resource manager underneath called Unicorn. That resource manager has been optimized for cloud, optimized for containerization, and optimized for application aware. And so we're driving an efficiency in terms of how we run the resourcing that's between two and four times more efficient than the standard resource manager that comes with Kubernetes. And with Airflow, we're then able to composite uh, directed graphs using operators. And we've embedded Cloudera data warehouse operators and Cloudera machine learning operators. These enable seamless integration and the development of secure pipelines. Again, we talked about visual applications. I won't spend too much time on this, uh, but this is all about aligning with our vision and making analytics accessible to all and making it faster to get to the story, get to the answer. I want to close out with a couple of calls to action. The first is if you go to our on-demand, cloudera.com 
ondemand.cloudera.com, um, you'll find our training catalog. And first of all, please just tick off free CDP training and explore our introduction to Cloudera Machine Learning. That'll just give you a primer on what Cloudera Machine Learning can do. We've also got one there for Data Warehouse and a little bit about CDP as an overarching platform. The second is if you go to users.html, so to cloudera.com users.html, there's a number of resources available here. There's a few videos of the platform, a number of tours which are interactive. So they'll take you through how the platform is provisioned and set up and configured. And each of the data services has their own tour, including data engineering, data ware, and um, machine learning. I'd also encourage you to look at tutorials as well. Tutorials can be filtered by role, so it's data engineering, a series of tutorials there on how to build Spark applications and run them at scale. Machine learning, a couple of tutorials in there. One I like is one on uh, finding an optimal uh, maintenance schedule for jet engines. And there's a set of tutorials on how to go through and do that. Um, they come with assets, both videos, how to do that in first principles, and also in some cases, code and assets you can download and utilize it in your own applications. So I'd ask you to explore those and, and Please provide feedback on those. Let us know what you think. So I just want to close out. Hope everybody has a, a good holiday, nice break. Um, I'll be taking a, a couple of weeks off myself. And I just want to say thank you very much to everybody for your time today and your attention. And hope this has been useful and give you some insights of what we're doing at Cloudera to make data and analytics accessible to all and help drive speed to value. Bearing in mind, once you've delivered those machine learning models, you need to then put them into operation and you need to maintain them. And when you're delivering 360,000 hours saved a year, you might need to think in terms of how you grow that and how you operationalize that. It's very hard to switch something off that's delivering such value. Thank you very much. And I hope you have an amazing conference.